Hey, Dex Tools and Commonwealth communities. We have a huge AMA today. Before we get started, could you please introduce yourself and your background? Hey, everyone. My name's Tim. I'm representing Commonwealth uh, as one of the founders, but also one of the people who are inside um, daily operations, getting things moving and uh, yeah, representing All Street. Uh, my background is I uh, co-founded Metavest Capital, who is one of the co-founders of Commonwealth together with Master Ventures. And um, yeah, I'm super excited to be here and, and to talk about Commonwealth today. Amazing. It's our pleasure to have you guys on board today. So could you explain what Commonwealth is and what are you guys hoping to achieve with it? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it started with a problem and we recognized the problem ourselves and Master Ventures, Kyle. Uh, we got together and we said, hey, how is it that the most important people in the whole Web3 ecosystem are left out of like probably the biggest value creation moment in Web3, which is like the early stage uh, investment opportunity into like startups, Web3 startups specifically. Um, you know, we all know very well how Web2 uh, is funded. You know, you got the A16Zs, the whole Silicon Valley, all those guys, they come together and they're like, you know, putting their money into early stage startups. And if they fly and if they do well, which a lot of them do, you know, it's huge multiples and incredible value that's created for those uh, institutions, those VCs. And in Web3, right, we're different. Uh, Web3 relies on decentralization. It's about individual empowerment. It's about, you know, taking back and removing the middleman and, and you know, all the kind of uh, centralized components, which, you know, we, we've inherited from Web2. So we were like, guys, we should be able to do this better. Um, so Commonwealth was born with that problem statement, with the idea to open up access to this early stage venture to, to this like huge value creation moment to everybody in the web three community to make it more sort of yeah uh, what's the word democratized and equal and fair opportunity uh, so it's a platform um it's it's a web three protocol but you know users will only ever see this uh, mobile app really on the front end and then you've got this huge tech stack of course which involves web three behind it you've got a protocol which does all the decentralized management of the whole system um, yeah, so we like to say it's kind of like if you took A16Z and you married it together with like Wall Street bets and that subreddit kind of viral kind of passionate investment spirit, and you took like a Robin Hood, like fintech style app and you put those together, that's what Commonwealth is basically. Wow, I love it. I love what you guys stand for. Could you introduce the team and who's behind all the great work at Commonwealth? Yeah, so I've, I've mentioned Kyle. Kyle is one of the co-founders. He's a long-standing uh, advocate of decentralization and Web3. He's been around in the space, I think, for you know as long as anybody, basically. Um, he's got a venture studio called Ma uh, Master Ventures Global. Um, they've incubated a lot of projects, paid network and, and you know, various other projects that have done really well uh, in Web3. Uh, but they're first and foremost, you know, hugely passionate about decentralization and first principles in Web3. Um, together with Metavest Capital, that's the two kind of VC and uh, enterprise builders that came together to make Commonwealth. So you've got Kyle and then you've got uh, John as well, who's the CEO of, of Metavest Capital. And then you've got Tony Kelly and Tony Kelly was the first executive hire and he's a big part of the project, he's been with us for more than two years. Uh, what Tony has forgotten about technology, none of us could ever hope to imagine to even, you know, kind of acquire in terms of information and knowledge. He's brilliant. He's been around for about 30 years doing tech. Uh, he was at Intel. He was Activision Blizzard VP. He was actually the guy who was responsible for Call of Duty across China. So his software has scaled to like 800 million users worldwide. So uh, Tony always says things like, hey, you know, like before I was doing this, I was helping kids like shoot each other's heads off with computer games. And I was wondering if this was my if this was my life purpose. And then he came across Commonwealth and he was like, wow, this is so much more technically challenging than anything I've ever done before. But also there's like a social good behind it. So he feels really at home. He's been with us for, like I said, over two years and he's been spearheading the design and build of Commonwealth. Um, and then very much kind of, yeah, led by Kyle and John and, and uh, you know, a huge ecosystem of people now that have come into Commonwealth. Awesome. Sounds like a stacked team. And I'm a big fan of Call of Duty. So that's cool to know. I didn't know that. I, I'm curious because launch pads, they've been hot. The, narr the narrative has been hot. And what unique features or approaches set Commonwealth apart from the conventional launch pads that we've seen come and go? 
Yeah, hundred percent. Great question. So launchpads are good, right? Uh, I think a lot of people have done well with launchpads, especially in the last cycle. Uh, there's a few issues, of course, with with launchpads that we're trying to tackle with Commonwealth. One is that a launchpad is essentially giving you access to something that's launching, right? So that whole piece of early stage kind of value that's um, that's given to people who come into seed rounds and pre-seed and family rounds and private rounds and strategic rounds. This is all a private network, right? And then comes the launchpad just as you're about to put the project into the public domain. It's cool. It's still great. Um, but one thing is, obviously, there's a huge time lag between when early stage investors are accessing these opportunities and people who are using launch pads are accessing these opportunities. So that's one big you know, differentiating feature, of course. So what Commonwealth is doing essentially has never been done before, um, especially not in Web3. It's actually only possible in Web3 because of the you know, sort of the decentralized um, smart contract protocols and you know, that whole system uh, wouldn't be possible in Web2, of course. So that's what I love about the fact that we're doing Commonwealth is that it's not just something that we've added on Web3 to and said, hey, this is cool. It's something that wouldn't be possible without Web3, which is real innovation for me. Um, the other thing about launch pads is, of course, they're like one hit wonders in a sense. You get like, uh, I don't know, one title, uh, gaming title that's launching or a new infrastructure that's launching or something cool that's getting hyped. Um, but for whatever reason, if that flops, if the team don't follow through or something happens, there's a lot of risk, right, with with getting involved into these projects, uh, no matter what. And if one fails, then of course, your, your investment fails. Whereas Commonwealth is taking the kind of portfolio approach where if you invest into an early stage fund on Commonwealth, uh, you're getting access to like a spread of early stage investments, not just one investment. So it's kind of uh, if one doesn't work out, then you're hoping like two or three in the bunch work out. And that's all you need to be really um, successful um, when you're investing into funds, generally speaking. Totally agree with you. And wow, you guys really set yourself apart from the traditional launch pad. And, I, and I'm very intrigued. And I have to ask, what are the exact steps on joining Commonwealth community and participating in the early stage VC deals, as you mentioned? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question because there's no barriers to entry, which is really cool. Wow. Um, so anybody can come along. It's it's an app, like I said, mobile first. I don't know if you guys remember Friend Tech. Uh, a few months ago, it got like a lot of notoriety and everyone's like, it's a PWA, it's a progressive web app. And everyone's like, oh, that's so cool. But nobody really knew what it meant. Um, essentially, what it means is that the app works on mobile and tablet like straight off the bat. So um, it's desktop enabled, it's mobile enabled, it's laptop enabled. That's really important for us because we want everybody, even if you don't have a computer, you can still use your phone and download Commonwealth uh, directly off the website uh, or you know, go to our URL and just click connect. And you're basically in, you register your account. You do need an email to register. Uh, we do email and then on chain. It's on base network as well, which is one of the most easy networks to use in Web3. Um, so yeah, you connect a, a base enabled uh, wallet or you, you basically just connect your uh, your wallet. And if you don't have a wallet, it can also create one for you as well. So it lowers that friction of entry, which is very important for us. But essentially, yeah, that's all you need. Um, and then you can just invest into one of the funds that are on the app. If there's no funds available on the app, because right, right now we have two funds, both of those are actually not available uh, inside the app because they've been sold out, right? We had the, the first uh, priceless fund or the free fund, which you couldn't actually buy. You had to win it. You had to earn it. So you had to like do all these online tasks and stuff. And like thousands of people on the leaderboard got airdrop their slice of this fund, right? So you can actually go and, and, and offer them to buy their slices on the secondary market if you want to. If you want to get into that fund, you can see the 15 projects that are in there. There's some amazing projects like... You know, Analog is one of the biggest projects coming to market. It's in there. Um, Block Lords, one of the best gaming projects coming up. It's in there. You know, the 15 very hot on launch projects are in that fund. And you can go and buy a slice on the secondary market. They're a little bit more expensive than, um, than the entry level value, let's say. But they're still like, you know, I think there's some deals to be had, right? So that's really interesting. That, that part is not possible without Web3 either. Like that's, it's basically the slices of the funds are NFTs and they're in your wallet, right? So you can safely and securely and permissionlessly uh, trade those or transfer them or do what you want with them. Only possible again through Web3 web technology. Um, the other fund is the Alpha Fund. 
Yeah. That launched uh, two weeks ago and it sold out super quick. So if you didn't get into that one, uh, it was only a million dollar fund, uh, proof of concept basically. So that was that's full up and that's going to start deploying into early stage projects very, very soon. Um, it, similarly, you can go and buy a slice on the secondary market if you weren't able to get into that one. But there's going to be stuff coming into the app all the time, guys. Like uh, there's going to be new funds. There's going to be different types of funds as well. There's a lot to do. Um, but essentially, no barrier to entry, very easy to get in. And yeah, everyone's welcome on all street, like we say. Well, you guys heard that here first. No barrier to entry. That's huge. A lot of launch pads require you to buy their tokens, stake them for a long time, but you can just go download the app and get started with Commonwealth. Amazing. I want to learn more how it works. Can you explain Commonwealth's, uh, Commonwealth's revolutionary economy, how it works, particularly in terms of how value accrues to the protocol and is and redistributed to the community? Totally. Well, yeah, this is actually what sets us apart, I think, and one of the things we're most proud of, like most uh, protocols, Web3 projects, uh, crypto projects in general, right? Um, they will have some kind of value creation system, right? Because otherwise, they're, they're not really needed for anything. If they're not creating value, why do they exist? That would be my question in the first place. But if they do create value, a lot of times project founders are taking that value for themselves, right? There's either an equity, um, you know, ownership model where the revenue gets created, generated, and then paid out in dividends to equity holders. Like that's, that's like a normal legacy traditional um, you know, TradFi model or, you know, traditional business model, let's say. Now, Web3, of course, is different, right? We're decentralized. We want everyone to own the protocols, but very few protocols actually follow through with this principle. Yeah. Commonwealth is 100% owned by the community, right? So if you are holding wealth tokens, you actually, in fact, own the protocol and all the value that gets created through that protocol in Commonwealth. And that's really, really important to us because... Uh, well, we want this thing to be sustained forever. We want it to like be a machine which uh, generates its own value, creates its own reason for existing, and then distributes that to like the whole community. And then the whole community is incentivized to be part of the ecosystem and you know contribute to that value creation. So like what you have is this m magnificent network effect where everybody's working towards the same goal, right? And that's that's super important for us. So. Um, all value created in Commonwealth is really trapped inside the protocol. It means that none of the revenue is siphoned away by a central team or any other uh, stakeholder in the system. It's really for the for the community, for the 99%. Um, there is actually something really important there, which is that, um, and I called it out at the start, not, not every project creates value, but we do believe Commonwealth will create a lot of value. And you've already seen it with the first two funds. People want to get access into these early stage opportunities, right? It is so like, it's so like now, like people are sick of being exit liquidity. You know, you come in late to a project, it's trading on the market. And actually what a lot of people were doing in the last cycle is putting their hard earned money into the market whilst people who got in earlier were taking their money out, right? That's not a, it's not a sustainable system. It's not a fair system. Um, so people do want to get in earlier. That's where a lot of like, like the, the edge is created, let's say. Um, so there is a need for this product. We, you can see it. We, we've already proven it somehow. And you know, it's only going to get bigger and bigger, I believe. Um, now, if there's a need for the system, this, this service, this product, whatever you want to say, there's going to be a demand, right? For And then that demand is going to translate into fees, transaction fees and revenue. And the whole model is built in a way to, um, to, to kind of create that, that sort of revenue uh, share. So um, if you take if you take an A16Z, I keep referring to that, that's a traditional company. But if you took all the value that they create over the years by investing into early stage um, ventures, they take a lot of that value themselves as owners of that company, right? They take like 20%, 30% of the upside. Now, in Commonwealth's case, all that upside that the owners would normally take is being trapped and pushed into the treasury and into the protocol. And it, it, it makes the system enriched, right? So over time, if there's a demand for this product or this service for the system, and that demand translates into the machine operating and revenue getting created, then that all of that revenue is going to be then 
attributed towards the token holders, the community, the people who own Commonwealth. And that's so super important for us because, again, we want to build something that's here for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, true closed loop circular economic systems are the only ones that are going to sustain the test of time because otherwise it's the snake eating its own tail, right? At some point, there's not going to be value to distribute. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. It's a long answer, but I hope people got the, the crux of it. Amazing, Tim. A well-detailed answer. You guys are creating an insane flywheel, which is just providing tons of value and rewarding the community you guys have built. Um, Web3 has really leveled the playing field and changed the way investing is done. And I love what you guys are building. You touched on the wealth token. So I want to ask, how, what role does the wealth token play within the platform and how does it contribute to the overall function of the ecosystem? Yeah, great question. Listen, if, if there was no wealth token, uh, essentially you don't have that fuel that makes Commonwealth a Web3 kind of enterprise or system. Uh, without it, it would just be kind of like another Robin Hood, essentially, with some smart contracts built into the background. But you do not get all of this like huge, massive network effect where everybody's incentivized to interact with each other and gets rewarded for those interactions. Of course, you wouldn't have any way to represent the um, decentralized ownership of Commonwealth either, right? This is the crux of it. I mentioned that if A16Z, and this is the level we want to get to with Commonwealth, or we hope that All Street grows to, it's really, we want, we want it to be the largest VC in the world, right? And if you take the largest VC in the world and you take all of the fees that are generated by that VC, and, and that VC then, pays out or you know gives that value that that revenue that profit to the people who you know kind of own it which is the community then that is like that is the the raison d'etre of commonwealth so without without the functionality of the wealth token without actually having a a, a token for that purpose we don't we it doesn't exist it doesn't work right so it's like core to the whole system of course there's a lot of utility features as well right let's be honest uh we uh, the system is built to drive demand as well of the token um so there's demand built in by way of people needing the tokens in order to reduce their fees so if you take a normal user on the platform they enter into a fund let's say they've entered into the alpha fund and they're in for like 100 bucks and okay, that hundred bucks, cool, right? So if that hundred bucks does a multiple of like two or three X, that hundred bucks becomes like $300, right? The profit on that is $200. Now yeah. the protocol will take 40% of that $200 which is $80. And that will be the value that gets trapped for the, you know, the whole protocol itself. Now, if that user, and they'll get a notification or it'll be like information on the app, if that user wants to reduce that 40% down to like 10%, they can do that by staking wealth tokens. And they'll be able to do that inside the app as well, right? So um, a lot of users are, you know, game theory, they're gonna be like, yeah, I wanna, I wanna reduce my fees right down. I, I don't wanna pay like high fees, who does? So there, there, there's, there's a baked in then kind of driver of necessity for this wealth token there. And if they don't stake, that's fine. That's cool because that just means that more uh, of the sh profit share is going towards the token uh, to the to the protocol, which ultimately is owned by the token holders, right? And over time, if there's like hundreds of millions um, of value that's that's locked in this protocol, it will be up to you, the wealth token holders, to decide what to do with that. Be like, okay, let's pay out to the wallets that are, are staking wealth tokens, for example. That that could easily be done, and that that probably will be done. But that's all governance based, right? And again, you need the wealth token to to be influencing in governance as well. So there's all of that. There is one more feature which is super cool. Well, I just want to touch on it. It's called the community fund, right? Yeah. And it's like a it's like a baked in fund in the background of Commonwealth. So a lot of users will be quite casual. They'll maybe just put in hundred bucks into one of the um, you know sort of the alpha fund or something, and that's it. They won't go deeper into the app. But if you go deeper into the app and you you see that if you're a top staker, you basically uh, have a fund that's inside the app that's already being funded by transactions in in the protocol. And right now, there's already enough uh, funds for the first two community fund deployments because uh, we have Genesis NFTs, which have been trading on the secondary market. They've been capturing fees. So that amount of fees has actually, that amount of trading action has produced enough for two investments on the community fund. And what that means is it's really cool is that the top stakers get to deploy those funds into whatever they want. So if they think, okay, 
I love what these guys are doing over here. They're probably not going to get funded by, by VCs because it's so wacky and different, but we love it and we're Commonwealth and, and we want to support these guys. They can put that money into that project and all of the, re all of the, all of the returns from that go back into um, the wealth token as well. So there's no like, there's no fees on that. Uh, there's buyback and burn baked in as well. So that, you know, we're, we're helping with the token yeah. long-term health and things like that. Um, but there's a lot in here, right? So I do encourage people, if you're very interested in this stuff, go to our white paper. It's 50 pages long. It was just released two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. And it details all of this in like, transaction flow diagrams and it's really really elaborate and you know a lot of time and effort's gone in by a lot of great people to create that so i know there's a lot going on with my answers but it's in there but essentially wealth is the boss it is like how commonwealth exists amazing a ton of utility you guys are offering i'm also a big fan of the community uh fund as you mentioned where you give the community a chance to invest in projects or um, initiatives that they think are interesting. That's very cool. You did mention, Tim, that you guys want to be one of the largest VCs in the world, also ran by the 99%. How does Commonwealth plan to make this vision a reality? Uh, that's a great question. This is where the secret sauce lies, Well, and uh, this is why it's so like amazing and gives me so much like hope for the future of Commonwealth, because nowhere um, and, and i don't know if you guys are watching crypto banter at all but yesterday ran put out a great show on crypto banter where he was saying like vcs take a back seat you're not adding value it's all the micro influencers out there that are actually adding value to projects and like we're seeing this cosmic shift now in web3 where it's not like we don't like you vcs like you're mean you're ugly it's just like there's more to it there's there's other dimensions that are there which vcs generally can't respond to I love VCs. We wouldn't exist without a VC either, right? You know, like I think they've brought so much to, to Web3, right? But there's limitations. And one of those limitations is that um, the community, of course, is, is the real, um, uh, it's the raison d'etre. It's, it's why Web3 does what it does. It's why it is what it is, right? And it's why it's going to succeed because it's the power of the 99% versus the 1%, right? So the... The beauty of Commonwealth, and this is what like is so exciting, is that when a project comes along, a founder comes along to Commonwealth and says, hey, I've heard about you guys. I'm super interested to be a partner with you, meaning we would like you to invest in us. We would like Commonwealth to invest into this new, amazing startup that's coming to market. And the reason they would say that is because not only do you get the capital, of course, like you get the, the hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is investment into your into your project, which everyone needs money. Right. But what also they need is advocates and guerrilla marketing and people who are like interested in their ecosystems and their services and their dApps. And that's what Commonwealth brings. And it's not like something we say we bring. It's brought through the mechanisms of the platform. We have an inbuilt gamification rewards and incentives program, which actually activates users like automatically to go and like be part of ecosystems to explore, to connect their wallets and actually like interact with the, the online online and on chain uh, nature of what these projects are doing. That is invaluable, right? Because exactly what I said at the beginning, web three doesn't really exist without this community and without the users. Right? So, um, when you when you think about this flywheel you mentioned earlier right so projects come along to commonwealth because they want uh they want to have that guerrilla marketing they want that engagement right and that's super important and then if the best projects in the world want the you know want that guerrilla marketing what's going to happen the quality of the projects in commonwealth is going to increase right and over time, more and more users are going to come to the platform because that's where you get access to the best opportunities, the best projects. And that's more people to activate in guerrilla marketing. And then, you know, you can see how this, uh, the, the flywheel reinforces itself. And then, of course, because we are, um, you know, in Web3 and we're using state of the art technology stack, the scale is possible. Like we can have hundreds of millions of people part of Commonwealth. There really is no limit to it. And that's what's so exciting for me. I really love your enthusiasm and it's a very noble goal. Number one VC by the 99% and enrich the community along the whole way. 
I'm, I'm really rooting for you guys. Commonwealth mentions the concept of creating a community. Back into Link Marines, XRP Army, could you elaborate on how Commonwealth plans to achieve this level of community engagement and uh, loyalty? Yeah, totally, man. So it, it's really, it's about that flywheel that I just mentioned, right? So our app um, isn't just an investment kind of experience, right? People will probably go there because they've heard that's where you can get access to like early stage opportunities and that's not happened before. So that's already enough of like a value proposition for most people to go and explore. Cool. But once you're there, like we've built the, the system, the, the app has been built to like pop up notifications and go, hey, did you know that if you go and um, yeah, let's say uh, join Block Lords uh, Twitter, for example, uh, we will reward you with XP or wealth tokens or whatever the rewards are, they're, they're still being worked on. But the, the, the whole crux of the thing is that it happens inside the app and it happens seamlessly. So people, people users, are getting to know that there's something else that they can do, right? And they can go and be part of these communities. And when they're there, they might go, holy crap, this Block Lords looks quite interesting. And then they might get another pop-up saying, hey, did you know that if you connect your wallet to Block Lords and you like, um, you know, I don't know, go into the game and, and do something in the game, you can get more wealth tokens or more XP from the app. People might do that as well. So essentially through our app experience, we're not only, um, you know, offering or, people are not only able to get access to these investment opportunities, they're also getting like bit by bit drawn into an experience in other ecosystems. And that's all happening with an in, in-house, if you want, custom designed um, gamification system, essentially. Uh, we haven't like, we, you know, Zeely and Galaxy, they're so like famous right now because they activate users, but it's quite superficial activation, if I might say so. Um, uh, we've basically, we believe anyway, our gamification system is uh, as good, if not better, more meaningful. And it's also in integrated into the app. And like I mentioned earlier, Tony Kelly, who's one of the co-founders of Commonwealth and been, been with us for a long time, Call of Duty, China, 800 million users. He knows what gamification is all about. So we've been able to build out the system quite nicely. So more people getting incentivized to um, sort of be part of other communities. That is what we're bringing. That's what we talk about with the XRP army and yeah, the, the Link Marines, for example. And Commonwealth will be, you know, as more as powerful, if not more powerful than all of the online communities, because you know, it's something in it for everyone, essentially. <laughs> Amazing. Well, you can sign me up for the community. Do you guys have a name for yourselves? Uh, we're all street. Um, so, you know, people who come into Commonwealth, they sometimes look at Commonwealth and go, um, you know, is it all street or is it Commonwealth? And we, we purposely wanted that. So like, it's, it's a, it's kind of like a marketing, um, like environment to enter into. Right. So you're drawn in by the idea of Commonwealth, but what you actually end up kind of getting served is this idea of all street right being part of everything together and it's the 99 percent, not the one percent and of course all street not wall street right so um yeah this is this is kind of how we roll love it you guys are empowering billions of people across the across the whole world what are your next major milestone goals in the next three months tim i'm curious what you yeah think. great Great question. So it feels like a long road traveled already, but it's really just a start. And I think every startup kind of founder or anybody in this business feels the same way at this stage, right? It's like, oh, we've already run a marathon, but we've got like six more to run. <laughs> um, so the next kind of you know, big milestone for us is the public sale. Uh, that's happening actually this week. Um, so it's the 22nd and 23rd of May. It's a really important moment for us because Unlike most projects, we are Commonwealth is allocating 15% of the supply to the public sale. Uh, it's a big, big number. And the idea behind that is, of course, growing the community as, as widely as possible, getting as many people to be part of all street as possible. And that's really, really important for us, because if you put it like a measly, like like 0.5% or something like it, it's not really, you know, giving value to the community. We want the community to be as big as possible and we want it to own as much as possible of Commonwealth as quickly as possible. Um, so that's the public sale. Um, it's on paid network. So um, 
it's uh, yeah, it's it's a great launchpad. Uh, Ignition. Uh, if you don't know it, please uh, look it up. Uh, there's probably a link as well in in what we're showing you. I don't. I hope so. Um, and that's on the 22nd and 23rd of May. You do need to register on their um, platform to be able to participate. Um, but if you go there, you get all the information on it. And then directly after that, uh, we will be listing on exchanges as well. So we're like I mentioned earlier, we're on base network, so we'll be native to um, Uniswap uh, version two on base and also some central exchanges, uh, which I can't talk about uh, with a lot of detail, um, but yeah, really promising developments happening there. Hopefully again, to, to broaden the access uh, of Commonwealth to as many people as possible. And then after that, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, continuing to prove the concept. So the alpha fund that's on Commonwealth right now, that will start to make investments into some of the best projects that are coming up. Some amazing like Bitcoin ecosystem projects, some AI, like mind blowing AI sort of hybrid Web3 projects. Um, gaming, of course, you know, still a big feature in Web3, you know, the uh, D-PIN as well. These are the stuff types of investments that are going to be sort of looked at by the alpha fund that's going to that's going to completely take over um you know like from now basically you'll start to see that all happening so that's very very exciting um, and then new funds and different types of funds and all the different feature sets that are in our roadmap uh which you know there's too many to explain right now but there's a lot a lot a lot happening and yeah uh more marathons like i said you guys have a lot uh, on the roll, and I know how exciting and stressful it gets uh, leading up to a public sale in TGE, so uh, wish you luck, and I know you guys are going to smash that out of the park. I have to say, Tim, I learned a lot in this AMA, and for everybody watching that wants to get involved with Commonwealth, how can they support the project, and do you have any upcoming important dates that people should watch out for? I know you just mentioned your public sale. Yeah. Um, so if you want to support the project, if you want to join All Street, um, our X account is, is pretty phenomenal. Uh, we're posting like five, six times a day. Uh, awesome content. So definitely go and follow the X account. All the important updates go through there. Um, our app is actually the way to go. So once you sign up for the app, um, you'll get your email address entered in there. And our email um, updates are like really rich and really important. So if you want to find out about the next fund, for example, it's good that you're registered on the app already because you'll get that notification. Uh, and then, yeah, it's 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 this week, um, public sale, 22nd and 23rd of May. It's 11 o'clock UTC kickoff. Just make sure you're registered beforehand. Um, yeah, those are the ways to get involved. And like I mentioned before, if you really want to be part of one of the funds, the priceless fund or the alpha fund, and you miss them, uh, you can you can go and get involved on the secondary marketplaces. Um, you can get all of that information through the Commonwealth link tree. Amazing. We'll put the link tree in the description, the app download, everything you need to find Commonwealth and participate in the public sale. Um, so you guys don't have to go searching for it. What do you think about Dex tools and then the future of DeFi? Wow, that's an amazing question. Uh, well, first of all, I love Dex tools, and it's not just because I love trading meme coins on on Dex tools and following all the, the price action on there. <laughs> Although let's be honest that is that is a big draw card for everyone right now um yeah no, dex tools is amazing what, what i what i genuinely love is the empowerment piece right so uh, and it follows the same ethos as commonwealth it's giving and somebody said this to me the other day and he was he's one of the core um uh people behind commonwealth as well and he's uh, ex facebook ex google uh, bd guy and he said, listen, you know what? Web, web one brought us information, right? The, the, the birth of the internet. We were able to like, you know, sort of understand information on a, on a very broad scale. Web two was the kind of like socializing of that information, you know, with Facebook and all the different platforms, which allowed us to talk about this information, talk about the Middle East war. Let's all debate the Middle East war and stuff, whatever. Web three is so much cooler because it gives us the information. It allows us to socialize around that information. And then it allows us to turn that information into financial opportunity, into empowerment, into ownership. And this is like, for me, progressing the world, progressing society. So it's very, very important for me that Dex tools exist because it's empowering people with this critical information. Um, and of course, Commonwealth taking it to the level of, you know, being able and Dex tools as well, being able to trade that information uh, is so important so that you can actually turn it into value, right? Uh, for yourself, not for someone else. That's, that's huge. That's amazing. I love it. 
amazing answer. Thank you for your time today. I learned a bunch about Commonwealth and everybody as well that's watching. For everybody that wants to get involved, sign up with the links below. Also, once again, Tim, thank you for your time. Looking forward to the public sale and what Commonwealth has to bring. Thanks so much, Well, Thank you. Thanks for all the hard work.